Toyota, the largest manufacturer in the entire world. In 2023, they had a very good year. They came out with the Corolla Cross Hybrid. In my opinion, that's the car to beat in the segment. Not because it looks great, not because it handles great. It's because you get 40 plus miles per gallon and it is probably one of the faster uh, compact crossovers on the market. Not quite as quick as like the CX-30 Turbo, but it's cheaper than that CX-30 Turbo from Mazda. But I love the Corolla Cross Hybrid for what it offers. It's essentially a lifted wagon Prius because it has the same Prius hybrid powertrain. We also got the rollout right at the tail end of 2023 of the new generation Tacoma. Um, hybrids will be coming in 24 of that Tacoma. We'll get into 2024 in a little bit. As we recap 2023, Grand Highlander came out. It is a home run from Toyota. Huge. It's essentially a, a minivan without sliding doors. Things massive. Got a hybrid 35 miles per gallon on it. You got upscale hybrid, the hybrid max with 300, was it 340 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque. And then you also have the turbocharged four cylinder to power in that thing. Tons of row room in the third row, tons of uh, cargo space behind the third row. Great ergonomics, looks good. Seeing them more and more on the roads here in late 2023. Uh, the Prius also came out in the very beginning of 2023 with the Prime. They're very, very, very difficult to get still. Uh, at the end of 2023, they're just not able to meet the demand there. And CHR bit the dust in 2023, even though it lives on in Europe with a redesign. All right, getting into 2024. That's why you guys are here. New Camry comes out on sale this spring, hybrid only, 225 horsepower to 232 horsepower, depending if you get all wheel drive. Um, it is a strong refresh. It's the same vehicle, new interior design, new exterior design platform is the same, um, but it's a fifth gen hybrid now. Uh, we should be getting uh, a new 4Runner finally. It should be announced sometime, I'm hoping in uh, early, or should I say the first half of 2024, and maybe starts hitting lots by the end of 2024 if we're lucky. But there's no way we're leaving 2024 without the announcement of a new forerunner, the large body on frame. Like it is a cult classic at this point. People love their forerunners like they love their tacos, right? So 2024 is going to be the year of off roading vehicles, I think, even though we get the Camry. No, 2024 was also the year we we're supposed to get a refreshed Venza, but that got killed off due to the introduction of the Crown Signia, the large wagon like. I think it's gorgeous. Watch my walk arounds on it. It's a very impressive vehicle, has a lot of presence to it. It's going to have the hybrid system. It's hybrid only around 230 some horsepower in the Crown Signia should be able to get about 40 miles per gallon uh, built in Japan, of course, as all crowns are, and it will be alongside the current Crown sedan. And I would take one over any Lexus NX or RX if I uh, had the money for one of those vehicles or if I was in the market for one of those vehicles. Also, Land Cruiser comes back 2024. So not only are we going to get a re or should I say a redesign or at least an introduction on the Forerunner, we finally get also the Land Cruiser coming back. You got the entry level 1958 at launch and the starting in the mid 50s. And then you have uh, the Land Cruiser Heritage model at launch with the circular headlights, but the J250, it's hybrid only. I call it, the, it's also called the Prado in other markets. It's hybrid only, 2.4 turbo hybrid, 326 horsepower, 465 pound feet of torque, eight speed auto, four by four. You'll have lockers on it. It's going to do really, really well for them. Um, and, uh, you know, the GX, the Lexus GX is coming out just before that, and it should also have a very strong market too, especially with the pricing. So very impressed uh, with the new Land Cruiser. We'll be driving it this spring for you guys more than likely. Last thing in 2024, it's not coming in 2024, but we'll get more than likely the redesign of the best selling Toyota in the world, the best selling uh, Toyota in North America and the best selling non-pickup truck vehicle in North America well, as well. This is the none other than the RAV4. The RAV4 is supposed to, I have a whole video on it. Make sure to check that out. The RAV4 will be fully electrified. 
with the new redesign coming in 2025. I guess this is almost a segue into 2025, right? Uh, and it will have the two and a half liter hybrid. It'll have a new updated all wheel drive system. More than likely, it is supposed to be the first vehicle uh, to have the Arene software, the new digital software. So the screen technology and over the air updates, it's going to be just on another level. We've never seen in any Toyota product before. And the RAV4 is bringing that torch of the future with it. Uh, and it's going to be sprinkling down into other Toyota and Lexus models with that software first approach all built around Arene. LA Auto Show announcement. We should have a plug-in hybrid probably coming out at launch uh, in 2025. And what's also happening in 2025 is that battery plant in North Carolina with 10 manufacturing lines for batteries is coming online. So that's how we'll see the RAV4 for the first time be built or should I say the RAV4 Prime for the first time be built in North America as that will have the battery packs being supplied for it. Eight of those battery pack lines at the battery plant in North Carolina are going to be for hybrids and plug-in hybrids. Two of them will be a dedicated EV battery pack lines. Segue right into the BZ5X or whatever they decide to call it. I don't know if Toyota's doubling down on the BZ names or not. No one likes the naming of it. Um, we are all familiar with Corolla, Highlander, Camry, Tacoma. We like real names for cars. We don't like numbers and letters. The luxury marquees can kind of do that, but mainstream models need to have a name. But here we go. The BZ5X, a three-row electric vehicle built in Kentucky. We'll also see a Subaru variant of that and maybe even a Lexus variant of that, of course, built in that Kentucky plant as well. BZ5X, three-row electric crossover. That also coincides with new electric motor technology and inverters coming from Toyota and Aishin and Denso. So that's exciting. Um, and we should see those maybe in refreshed, let's say, uh, BZ4X, for example. We, we should get a refreshed Mirai and Tundra in 2025. Could get a redesigned Corolla. Um, the Highlander is supposed to get a redesign in traditional um, timelines in 2025. But my sources are saying the Highlander is dead. Highlander is getting canceled. I don't have the timeline for that. I would assume it's happening in 2025. Maybe 2024 would be the last year of the Highlander. Also, what's happening to the Sienna? Well, Sienna production, I hear, this is, uh, take this with a grain of salt, but my sources are saying Sienna production is actually going to Japan. And if that's the case, I can make a whole video on, on my hypotheticals with the Sienna, but if that's the case, that's going to open up a lot of battery electric production uh, at the Indiana plant. Um, and that Sienna will still stay hybrid, hopefully plug-in hybrid as well when we get a new Sienna. And that's why the Sienna is actually due for a refresh in 2024. And I don't think we're going to get it because Sienna production is leaving uh, North America for the first time ever. So imported minivans. I'm, I'm okay with that because Japan knows how to make the best minivans in the world. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for uh, a Japanese made Sienna. Uh, what else in 2025? I'm hoping we get the Crown Sport. The Crown Sport would be the third entry in the Crown lineup after the sedan and the Signia. And that's also another reason why the Highlander could be getting axed, in my opinion. You bring in the Crown Sport, um, and this is the crown model I think most of you would rather have over the Signia. Um, it's not as big or as long or as honking as the Signia. It looks like a Ferrari per sangue. It looks amazing. I hope it comes in 2025. Land Cruiser FJ, that's the trademark of the baby Land Cruiser. And I think we could see this be either debuted and on sale in 2025 or just debuted with you know, availability in 2026, but the baby Land Cruiser has to come to North America. No one knows what kind of powertrains are on it. It could be something like a two liter hybrid, two and a half liter hybrid. It could be fully battery electric. I don't know. And uh, we'll have to find out probably next year. Going into 2026, okay, this is where things go quite bonkers. Their EV production in theory in 2026 is all the way up to a million and a half by the end of 2026. Currently in 2023, it's only, it, it might crack 90,000 EV sales, but like I said, a million and a half 
in just three years from now. So what is going to change? Well, we'll have a new battery electric skateboard. It is um, giga casted. You'll have three giga casted parts, front, back, and center. That will first debut on a Lexus model. It's not going to be long before we see that platform also on a Toyota. We could see it in 2026. We saw the FT3E at the uh, Japan Mobility Show. Me and David were both floored by the looks of it. And it, that is the vehicle that we should have had instead of the BZ4X. But I think this would replace the BZ4X. I want the BZ4X to be canceled. Not because it's a terrible car, it's just a bad EV, bad software, doesn't charge fast, very limited range. But if you're just driving around town, it's a perfectly fine vehicle as long as you can charge at home. But we need a no compromise EV, at least in the EV standards as we know them. Lots of range, charges fast, great software. And that should also so that should be coming in the FT3e. 2026 is like the year of the refresh potentially. Sequoia, GR86, Corolla Cross, Prius, and Crown could all see refreshes. And what would happen to the Supra? Well, in theory, we would get a redesign around 2026, but there's so much conflicting information on the Supra. I'm hearing hybrid or just straight ice with the inline six again. It's so hard to say. But we're going to move on to 2027 when they go from one and a half million EVs to two million EVs and more rollouts of more electrified models. Which ones those would be? It's just way too far out to say, but we'll see more EVs coming out for Toyota on the new platform. Um, we could see a refresh of the Grand Highlander and the Tacoma. And this is the year I also think that the Toyota small pickup truck, we, let's call it the Stout for now. I think this is the year it comes out with fifth or sixth generation hybrid technology it comes out way later than something like the Maverick. Um, but I think Toyota will still kill it with the Stout. And I think also the Sienna redesign should come out in 2027. Um, the one that's built in Japan more than likely. And yeah, I've heard fully electric, but it wouldn't make sense because it wouldn't qualify for the EV tax credit. So I think that is not going to happen, at least not in 2027 with the Sienna. But hybrid plug-in hybrid is, I think, a lock for um, the people mover with sliding doors. 2030, it's too far out to say, but we know that Toyota's uh, forecasted 3.5 million battery electric vehicles by 2030. Um let me know what you're most excited for in 2024 for Toyota. Is it the new Camry? Is it the new 4Runner? Is it the Land Cruiser availability, the Crown Signia availability? Um, is it the unveiling of the new RAV4 by the end of 2024? I can't wait for all of them. It's hard for me to pick a winner there. Uh, probably the RAV4, to be honest, uh, even though the Land Cruiser, I mean, oh gosh, I can't, I can't pick a favorite. But anyways, it's going to be a great year for Toyota. What do you want to see from them? Um, and I'll see you in the comments with the world's largest manufacturer.